Cindy. I am going to do a live today and it'll be all from the top down. So I'm kind of fidgeting with my camera a little bit, but let me just move my glass mat. That might be better. So I want to talk to you today about obviously painting on fabric. And I'm going to show you some that I've painted already. And then I'm going to talk to you about how I did them. So I got so excited when I saw that Elizabeth St. Hillier came out with 10 new stencils that she has currently at Joggles. Oh, Bill says I got to turn the video around. Yes, you're sorry. Yes. Okay, so everybody stay very, very still. Uh, and I'm going to spin it around. Close your eyes one second. Ready? This way is what I'm hoping is now correct. Is that correct, Bill? He's got to wait. It's a little bit of a delay. Oh, please don't get seasick when I'm doing this, okay? 90 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees? Oh, all right. Trying one more time. Okay, usually when I do these kind of live videos, I am doing them with Athena, right? And she is using the gimbal. Well, she's not available. So I'm doing this on my own, and I didn't realize that I had to go portrait instead of now. Oh, my goodness. You know, I'd start all over again if I could, but that makes it too hard. So please bear with me, and now you will all know what it's like. Oh no, come back, there you are. Okay, let me see if I can get this in the camera view. All right, Bill, is it currently correct? Bill's looking, he's making sure, it seems to me like it's a little bit tipped. The whole screen toward you. The whole screen toward, toward me, okay. We're gonna go with this, I'm gonna just move my glass mat. There. Okay. We are ready to start now. Okay. So please, please, please um, chat with me. I'd like to know where you're at, what you're doing, if you've ever tried any of this painting. I also wish that I'd had enough time that I not only could have painted these Klemp inspired um, fabrics, but that I also had time to make a Klemp inspired quilt. A tick. Okay. A tick. That way, maybe? Bill wants me to turn it again. Honey, I just camped. Okay, we're going to leave it just like this. Okay, he says it's, oh, I see. He says it's off center. That I can do by shifting. I'm sorry about all of the back and forth with the cameras. If you ever try doing this by yourself, you will understand my dilemmas. Okay, so Klemp was a master, one of those artist masters that, you know, people go to school and learn about. Me, not so much. I um, never took an art class in my life except for like, you know, in elementary school and unless you call music art, I was actually a music major back in college. Um, so these, this is something I don't know, but I know I'd heard his name before. I don't know where he's from or anything like that, but you can go to Elizabeth St. Hillier's um, uh, YouTube channel and she goes through this whole thing because she is a for real artist and has been artist trained and stuff so she knows a lot more about them. I just was super excited. So these are now available at Joggles. Very, very popular. She had to go for a second printing already um, and I hope you're going to enjoy this format because I really like doing this because I don't have to have anybody, well except Bill and Athena to help me but Athena can't. Okay, so this is the first one. I don't remember what their fancy names are, but this is what it looks like. And I want to show you the ones that I made. Now, it was really very simple to make most of these. And I'm going to take you through the quick process, but with a light color and a dark color. So some of them show the design very, very clearly. Some of them, it's just a little bit softer like this one. So this would be the ghost print. If you look at this, I want you, as I move it, to see that then the dark is going to move to where the light is, okay? And it's in reverse because the way it goes down. So that's going to be the ghost print, which is just another way of getting all the paint off of your um, plate and using it to its best. Now here, I had mixed up some colors and put it down after I picked up the stencil. Love 
this. Now it helps that I use some of the shiny, I use some of the Liquitex iridescent medium, which is also available at Joggles. Um, I do love it when I get some shiny stuff going on with my fabrics. This is the one that I, the only one I remember the name of, and it was called Tree of Life, which is really kind of funky. I like that this is a Tree of Life, really? Okay. Well, hello, Sarah from England. And hi, Roxanne. Thank you for joining me. If you're looking at the chats now, you'll see that next to Roxanne's name is a quilt block. That means that she is a member of my channel. So she gets some perks along the way. And hello, Tiffany from Indiana. So this is the Tree of Life. And I want you to kind of notice here where some of these are free like that. Um, it does leave a make a really really cool print as you'll see but it does make it a little harder to take the stencil off so just an fyi so this is the one i made with the two colors using a gold underneath that's really very shiny and then green and this was the ghost print from that so just from the green after i picked up the stencil and i really love that one too then she's got many swirls and I want you to keep the swirls in mind. I'm going to turn to pick this one over so maybe you can see it better um, because she does a lot with layering. I'm going to show you a couple of geometric designs that layer under these swirls really, really nicely. And the swirls also have, let me see one. So see how this, this swirl is a very loose swirl. So when you are taking the stencil off, the um, fabric and the plate, just know that that goes whooping and kind of flips back into place. And I think it's kind of fun. So this is one where I put the stencil on top and beneath it, you might be able to see some lines happening. That's because I first used the geometric one and then I put the stencil with the paint on top and I'll show you this process to get that design and that turned out really great. This was the ghost print. So this is where I put the purple down and pick that up with all of the, you know, I had some extra little grungy bits on there which makes mono printing so fun. And then here is the blue. And hello, Linda from Western Pennsylvania. And the blue one's really nice because there are some leftover bits of stripes that were in gold on that. This one, I don't even know what to call it. I mean, I'm sure that Mr. Klemp had a fancy um, art name for this. It's got a few of my favorite things. It's got geometric design and swirl design all in one design. And I don't know if I could make a quilt with this type of thing, but look how I made the fabrics. So I did a lot of orange and red today because I'm looking in my stash of painted fabrics and I just didn't have enough. Um, so this was just the two color of that one that was really a lot going on. This was the stencil with the paint underneath it afterwards, so a more subtle print. And this was the ghost print. And I love the ghost print. I always am going to love the ghost print when I can get the design that is like a little bit darker and then these extra little tidbits of fabric or color coming in. Yeah, the purple is great. How, hello, Vicky from Australia, Queensland, it looks like. Now, this one is stripes and circles. So pretty self-explanatory. Again, it has those little spirals that kind of go pingy back when you're working with them, which created this one. So we've got the yellow with the orange, did the yellow gold, the yellow base first, and then the orange, again, is a shiny one. But in this case, I didn't use the iridescent medium. I used the Dilutions Shimmer paint and of course all of these paints are available at joggles.com so that's the shimmer paint all per totally permanent on fabric if you've ever watched any of my painting videos you'll know that I say that all the time hello I, I use a high quality muslin gale I do not pre-wash my muslin not that I'd be opposed to it except I don't have time so I just don't do it this one is the ghost print with the shimmery orange and this is the one that had the, um, the underneath of the stencil coming through. And then this one I did kind of a, it was a mix of colors because of course I never clean off my brayer because I'm that lazy. And then I had a gold on top. So this one in real life, again, really, really shimmers. And I'm not watching on real time, so I don't know if you can really see. 
Yeah, I guess that worked. That does. So not a nice shimmer going on. Here is one that is a little bit a larger, and this is a true stencil because it does have the frame going around. And then Elizabeth, if you watch Elizabeth St. Hillier's video when she introduces these, she explains the difference between a mask, a frame mask, and a stencil. It was all very interesting, but it's just not information I need to know. So if you want to know more about the difference of those things, then go to Elizabeth's site and she'll show you. But I love the coffee beans, the swirls, um, the geometric. And you see all of those patterns come back with all of the different designs. So that one had a little bit of everything going on. So a couple from that. This probably is my best, my favorite print of the entire session. Kind of had a mix of colors. Um, it is the ghost print. It just it, this needs to be like a 20 yard piece of fabric. Wouldn't that be cool? Hi, Georgia. Yes, I will be using them in a quilt just as soon as I can find the time. This one is, you know, I mentioned about the masks. This is a true mask. A true mask is going to be kind of where you don't have any frame going around it. I think that's one of the qualifications. And this has those circles that we saw in some of the other ones with the um, kind of a framing going around each of the circles or curved squares. And this one turned out really cool. And it really, this really shows the um, design and how effective that is. And then this was the, nope, this was another one. So that was light purple with the dark purple, not a ghost print yet. This is where I put the stencil down on top. So it's a very subtle design. And this was the ghost print. Again, really beautiful. And this, I believe, also was a ghost print. And for some reason, didn't get as much purple. If I go back to this one, this had the pink and red. And you see that there's quite a bit of the pink in here. And then the darker where the stencil was pulled up. And here, I must have pulled more of the purple out when I did the um, other print. And so it leaves me more of a purple and white. And then this is one where I just did on a, well, it wasn't totally solid. I had some other little teeny bits of colors from something else. Um, but just put the wet stencil down on top. And this is the outline drawing. These are the geometrics. So there are two geometrics. I think it might be it. Um, this one, which is very interesting because if you see the edge here, the edge is not fully framed. So if you were using a larger gel press, I'm going to be using the 8x10, but there is a new one out that is 9x11. And if you were using that, you would actually see these little gaps in your design. So these are really great under some of those really open swirls. So this is a ghost print, kind of going backwards and how I'm showing you this. This is just classically beautiful. I'd take 20 yards of this one again. Hello, Kentucky. Um, so what do we got? Uh, the ghost prints, yeah, the ghost prints look really cool, you guys. Um, it is the, I'll show you, I'll explain to you which is which. Here is the two color print. So with the, the yellow base and then the red. And then here I did a yellow base with the gold. And then this was kind of a, I'd done the gold with a little bit of the swirl and it just wasn't showing up. So afterwards I went through with the green because, you know, it's never done until I've overdone it. So this is one that combines. If you look underneath, you can see that I did the stripes with low contrast, then swirls on top. And that whole idea of getting layers. Now, a couple of my fab favorite fabric designers are Jason Yenter. He actually designs for In the Beginning. And Sue Penn, who designs for Free Spirit. The thing I love about their fabric is the layering. And so that's why I love it so much when I'm able to get a fabric that really does a lot of layering for me. This is one, it was kind of the purple, the iridescent, the green going on. Probably not one of my favorites, but you know, it'll do something in a quilt. This is the other geometric. Let me spin that one around too. This is, I think she calls it like cubes, but to me it looks like triangles. But, you know, maybe that's a clump thing. I don't know. But this has a lot of possibility. Um, in Elizabeth's video, she printed one like this and then flipped it over. So then they're going in opposite directions. I'm going to try. I don't know if I'll have time to do that today, but really, really a lot of potential there. Here I have a tone on tone. Uh, lighter blue with a darker blue. Ta-da! Perfect print. 
Here was the ghost print of some red that I did. Really like the way this one turned out, that splotchiness going on. This is the blue um, ghost print, and I left it on long enough that it picked up some of the little crusty bits. That's what this um, another YouTuber set calls them, crusty bits. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Not usually the phrase you want to use in quilts and in fabric, crusty bits. Yeah, you don't generally want those on your quilts, but for this, it really describes it well. This is another one with the swirls, and if you look underneath, and it's very subtle, there is red triangles. So it was a light blue with some red triangles, and then the swirls, again, giving it layering. And this is the light blue with the red triangles, and then swirls on top. This is probably one of my favorites, too. And the swirls on top for this one are this stencil. Um, this has the most dramatic, those little coily, springy guys that go bing, bing, bing like that. And then this kind of coffee bean that you saw in some of the other ones that were combination ones. Um, so many cool things going on with each of these stencils. This is the um, ghost print with that one. And this is one that I had a green base, and then I just put the stencil on top to get the stencil bits after that. One more fabric question. What color? It looks like it's white in the video. Yes, scale, they are white, but sometimes I actually work with a natural color, and the natural color kind of gives all the fabrics a little bit of warmth. So it's totally up to you. The, all, the fabric that I use is available for purchase from me. Um, if you will email me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com, then I can tell you more about that. It, I sell it for, I think it's $2.50 a yard plus shipping, and it comes in two to three yard chunks. Now, I thought I was going to be able to use my two plates and show you what I was doing both at the same time, but now that I have the camera set up this way, I'm not going to be able to. So this is the one that I am going to peel off the fabric that's been on there for a while, and yum, yum, yum. So I love it when I put a piece down and then peel it up after it's sat down for, I don't know, half hour, hour, something like that, because then it gets up all the stuff on my plate. Now, the stuff that you see, like that gold that you see, that's actually on the glass plate below. I just got myself one of those Tim Holtz glass plates, glass mats. Really like it because it is big enough for both of my plates. Um, so when I'm working, sometimes I'll paint and then I'll leave one down as I go and I press the ones that I've just painted to press them dry. So a couple of different ways of doing it. And then I do have a yellow one over here I'm gonna peel up that you'll be able to see. You just are not seeing the reveal. There it is. So this, my other plate had a little bit of purple on it. And then I pulled that up by putting a little bit of yellow underneath. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with all new. I've got my white fabric here already pre-cut down. I'm gonna be using my Dilutions paint, some of my shimmer, some of the regular colors, and I'm going to, generally speaking, because, you know, I can't do anything the same way twice, I'm going to start with a yellow, a light color first. So this is me just starting with my light yellow, because I want to build, and I want to build with darker colors on top. And this is going to be a little different for me, because I'm only using one plate, and I find it more better, yeah, me and my good English, to do two at a time. So this one's going to go, and I might actually get some more base going on the second plate while I'm, no, I don't want to, because then it'll be confusing. You won't see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to peel this one up, and that gave me a nice yellow base. Now I'm going to use my next color to come that's just a little bit darker on top of it, you know, I really do need two of them, but let's see. All right, and on this, I'm going to use that triangle. I did not clean off my brayer, but that's okay. I'm going from yellow to orange, and if the orange happens to have a little bit of yellow, then so be it. I'm going to try and get that. Move quickly. Um, if you use fabric medium, that does give you more freedom, um, time to go a little bit slower. Totally up to you. I don't generally use fabric medium unless I'm doing layering and more layering than I'm going to do today. And that 
gives me more time to play. All right. So this one is going to be face down. Now I'm going to grab, just because I don't have another base made, I'm going to grab another piece. And as I take this one up, I'm going to put the stencil onto that solid white one off to the side. All right. So there we have two tone. I'm going to take this and put it onto a white one that you do not see at this point. I'll show it to you when I'm done. I'm going to use another piece to kind of push that stencil down. Then I'm going to come over here to get this ghost print. The ghost print is the one that is just that solid color um, beneath. Mm -hmm. This is the one that I just put the stencil down on top of just a white one. And then this is our original. Now I'm going to use all three of these as a layering using a little bit of a darker color again, but then I'm gonna, what I'm going to use is those one of those swirl stencils. So you can see the idea of using the geometrics and the swirls. So let's put this one to the side. This one is the one that I can peel up. And there is my stencil design beneath. Very, very subtle, and that's okay because I'm going to add more to it. And this will be my ghost print. So I've got three prints from each pull, I guess. Okay. So there's the ghost print. This is the stencil, the one where the stencil paint was. And this is the one that I pulled it up with two layers. So now let's use a swirl. So I'm going to use this swirl design. This is Fiery Sunset. Um, the Dilutions paints, the reason I like them, they're acrylic. All acrylic paints would be permanent, but not all acrylic paints are as fluid as these are. And so I want the fluidity um, that I get with this. And I love that the size of the bottles are small enough that I'm not buying, you know, a big, huge bottle of something. These are like less than $3 each. Putting the stencil down, now I'm going to go over it with the one that had the darker orange that I did the first one with. As I'm putting it down, using the heel of my hand to kind of pick up some of the paint. Um, one thing Elizabeth says that I love is she says, before you dismount, make a peek and make sure that you've got what you wanted. Ooh, yum, yum. All right. So you can see the yellow underneath, the oranges there. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put this off. You're not going to see it for a second. And as I pull it up, you see those spirals come springing up. Okay, and now I'm going to grab a piece to do my ghost print with. Okay. Now, sometimes I'll do a ghost print with something else, but a lot of times I just like to see what the ghost print's going to do all by itself. Well, that one is doing that. I do grab... Excuse me for having to bring these back in because I'm not using two plates. But I put a piece of fabric on top. This is the one that had the stencil on top. And go like that. Yeah, in the, on the black is really interesting, especially if you've got very, very opaque um, paints. You can get some really cool effects, and you can also get some really nice shiny things. Hello, Canada. How's it? How are you doing up there? I hope that you're staying away from... The, uh, there seems to be a lot of wildfires up there. They're in, in Minnesota. All right. So now I'll peel this one up. And this is where sometimes those springy coilies kind of get stuck on the fabric a little bit. But I love this. Ooh, there we go. All right. So I've got the nice, subtle softness of the stencil print below of the yellow. And then the red with the spiral going on, which this is just a really nice light colored, you know, you got to have lights and darks, right? And then this is the original ghost print of the yellow. So this should be a ghost print of the orange. So sometimes this is when I'll actually take my other prints to the ironing board. And while they're being ironed, I will let this one set, but we really don't have time for that. So we're just going to see what we get. Oh, that turned out nice. All right, so this again, a ghost print. So nice, light colored ghost prints in the yellow and the red. So let's do that kind of thing again, but this time I'm going to use, as soon as I find it in my pile, we're gonna start with this, the, the one that looks to me like little stripes. Oh no, the paper likes to stick. There, 
there we go. Now, I mentioned Elizabeth St. Hillier. Now, when she is doing hers, keep in mind that she's doing um, it all on paper because she is a, um, actually, it's actually very, very cool. You'll have to watch. Ooh, I'm going to get another brayer so I'm not mixing orange with blue. Um, she does collage with rice paper and, and makes what looks like still lifes. They are so cool. And she has like these online classes. So if you are into papers, that's what Elizabeth is painting on. But I learned so much from her watching her do this on paper that can totally relate to working on fabric. All right. So with that, I'm just going to pick up one solid color. So I can do another blue on top. And this one is a shiny one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your hand quilting. Um, you actually can hand quilt through some of these. Some of these, though, just like if you're doing fusible appliques and stuff, um, they'll be a little bit stiffer, maybe not so perfect for hand quilting. Okay, So in all truthfulness. All right, so there's my light blue. There's a little bit of light blue hanging around beneath. Now I'm going to bring in a dark blue or a darker blue. Spread that around. Again, not worrying about that. I still got a little bit of a light blue on my layer. This just makes it more fun. It goes all to that layering that I love so much. So I've been pretty busy lately, went on a family vacation, but I'm starting to get ready for the show season, if you will. Um, shows starting in Port Huron at a fiber and quilt fest. So if you happen to be in the east, on the east side of the state in Michigan, there's a quilt show there the very, very beginning of October. Then I'm traveling to Washington State to teach at a guild there and then is quilt festival which is down in houston so if you want to know more about that you can go to uh, quilts.com they've got the simplest website ever um, to find out more about that all right so this one perfect as it is light blue dark blue lines i'm going to add a swirl to that one too though now i'm going to pick up another blank piece off to the side pick this one up and lay that down on top of the blank piece. Now I'm going to grab another blank one and kind of smush down my stencil first that you're not seeing before I bring it here to pick up the ghost print. Mm -hmm. The mat I'm using underneath, I mentioned, is um, from Tonic. It's the company. It's a Tim Holtz kind of inspired thing. It's a glass mat. And you can use this because it, everything sticks to it so well. Um, but then you can use like a little razor blade to get any of the paint off. And it's very portable, like you were noticing, where I was able to move my mat to make things straight again. All right. So while that one's drying, I'm going to bring this one over. Peel this up. That's got a nice little subtle design. Um, I'm, yeah, I'll probably put that on the next stencil on top of that too. So I'll have the stripes, the geometric with the swirls. So now with that one, I'm going to use that stencil that had kind of what I called coffee beans. So I'm going to use that, which actually I think this is a mask. Yeah, doesn't really matter. Um, it's got, uh, yes, that's Molly. It is Gustav Klemp who painted famous The Woman in Gold. You know, I'm going to go with that. I really don't know, but I do know that that is his first name because that's what is written on the stencils. So Gustav Klempt. All right, so this is the one that I'm going to use with the stripes. So again, I'm going to go to, whoops, I got to pull this one up. But while I'm doing that, I'll tell you, I'm going to pull, use, I'm going to use a purple now. So you might notice that sometimes my colors are not the exact same colors as the um, Dilutions colors. That's because as my bottles get low, I will mix colors. Like I'll take, you know, red and more red and maybe I'll make a redder purple than I had before or a yellow or orange. So I love the bottles so much that I never throw the bottles away and I keep them and I just mix new colors in those bottles. All right. So here is the yummy, 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 yummy ghost print. And that's just fabulous. It has just a little, you can't really see it, but it's got the light blue that was shining underneath from the shimmer, which gives it the layering that makes it so fabulous. All right, 
So now on this one that was the light blue with the dark blue, I'm going to do the dark purple so that we will have a really good representation of the geometric with the swirling going on. And this one, I'm sure, is not called the coffee bean swirl, uh, but that's what it kind of looks like to me, so that's what I'm going to call it. Please excuse me for not knowing the name of every stencil I'm using. So I'm going to put this down. Now I'm going to take that one, the striped one with the light blues, and put that down right on top. I'm going to go between. So this would be one of the ones... Um, Somebody asked about hand quilting. This would be one of the ones that maybe the paint might be a little thicker. Maybe it wouldn't be the best for hand quilting. Oh, but it's beautiful for regular quilting. Look at that. The stripes and the blue underneath the purple. This one, yeah, I'd take yardage of that if it were available. Now I'm going to take up the stencil, move it on top of the other one, the light one that had the light blue. I'm going to smoosh that down and then come over here with that piece of fabric to pick up the ghost print. So that is really my process. Um, and when I'm using something like this, like when Elizabeth's um, peacocks came out, I kind of used the peacock ones with the peacock ones. And so this one, I think because this is such a, um, you know, this Klemp artist is something, some you know, people know him. I love the idea of using these Klemp inspired ones all together. Okay, so now I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to peel this one up. So all of these are available at joggles.com. Please use the link that I provided below, and I think it's active right now. Um, because of the way this live recording goes, it might not be, but once I'm done, I will go and make sure. If you do use the link below, I do get a small commission, and that makes it possible for me to buy more paint and more stencils. Honestly, you know, Joggles pays me, I buy stuff. That's the way it works. There. Oh, oh. Okay. So there we have a really light colored, have the light blue stripe with the purple in the swirlies. And then this one is going to be our last um, ghost print. So I hope you're all subscribed. If you're not subscribed, if you're coming in late, please subscribe to the channel on point-tv. Um, we did go over 50,000 subscribers, which was like pretty darn exciting. Um, never thought that we would get there. I, Sarah, uh, have, do I... Do I have you done a piece of fabric where you place one stencil on half of the fabric? You totally could. So Sarah's wondering, could I put one stencil here and another stencil here and just get that design? Totally could. I do some videos where I talk about layering, where I'm doing, you know, a little bit of different things all over and then peeling them up all at once. There are so many different ways that you can do with mono printing. Um, but for fabric, this is the method I like best because this does not get too much paint on it, that it makes it a perfect hand for quilting. And this one is yummy. Um, yeah, you want five yards of this one too. I think that would be a great idea, Georgia. So come back. This one was the ghost print and absolutely fabulous. Here we have a light color with the blue and the purple swirl. Here we have the dark of the blue and the purple swirl. This is the ghost print of just the blue stripe. Then we have the ghost print of the yellow triangle, ghost print of the red swirl. And I did do some more, didn't I? There they are. Right there in the pile. Here is the light color of the triangle with the swirl. So do you see the combinations going there? Here is the light or the dark version with the triangles beneath and then the darker color on top. So I love the, um, when you're kind of planning it, doing one solid light, then a medium, then a dark. That is just one way of a hundred different ways to get really, really cool color, um, designs in your fabric. Hello, um, do, I, do I wash painted blocks prior to sewing fabric together? I do not. Um, I will take this fabric that is right here on the screen right now. I will go over and iron it. Mainly, not yes, it does heat set it, but it's not necessary. 
You don't have to heat set it. If you just let it set there long enough, trust me, that paint's not going to go anywhere. Just like it never leaves your pants if you go and paint and get some paint, paint on your pants. Um, but then I would use it right then and there. And I've got many, many quilts that I've done that and then wash them directly right after. And if you go to any of the past videos where I've done this, and I'm going to link the playlist below, then you will see all of the different things that you can do. This particular video really was to highlight the Klemp design stencils from Elizabeth St. Hillier that are available at joggles.com. Please follow the links below for your stencils, your paint, your brayers, your iridescent medium, anything that you need. Um, and then anything else that you need also. Barb has, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand different mixed media um, types of products that there's just no end to what you can do with all of those. And I am, in, yes, using a cotton fabric. This is a high quality muslin. This happens to be the bleached high quality muslin. So it's white, but I oftentimes will use the um, tan and the fabric I use is available. If you'll just email me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. Um, I sell it for, I think it was $2.50 a yard. Um, plus shipping. So of course, shipping to Canada, maybe that might be a little bit too expensive, but totally up to you. Um, hope you like this video. I don't get as many views on the painting videos as I get in my quilting videos, which I understand because, you know, this painting on fabric is not for everybody. It is definitely for me. And truth is, I'm going to keep making them. So I hope a few of you out there like them. I love jo I know that Georgia likes them. So there you go. If Georgia will keep wa watching, I'm good. Um, yep. Plain old white. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you guys have a great day and thank you for joining me on this little impromptu Tuesday evening live video. Oh no, I've got to figure out how to stop this video. Okay. Okay. Bear with me. Um, I'm not sure how to stop this video. Let's try there. Nope, if Athena were here, she would know. Well, I'm going to have to take the phone down and I'll have to edit this jiggling out later. Hopefully I can figure this out. Um, how do... I, I don't, okay, this is kind of silly, you guys, because I don't know how to make it go away. So I'm going to turn my phone off. Maybe that'll do it. Bye-bye. <laughs>